In the last two videos, we've looked at some of the reasons why players are so angry and why, even when Star Stable, the horse riding MMO, is trying, it feels like the bitterness is always bubbling on the surface of the community. In this final part of the series, we're going to be finally answering the question, why are players so angry? And why is the community so negative? I'm going to give each of the content creators a chance to give their answers, and then we're going to look at player responses and reasons as well. I will also be incorporating Reddit posts, and we will also be exploring some final points that I feel can be expanded upon. Like, is the community dying? Does nostalgia really have such a sway? And why do we have to riot before SSO listens? But before we get into all of that, a big thank you to these content creators for being a part of this video. If you haven't yet be sure to subscribe to their channels and show them some love they really deserve it and of course i'd like to thank all of my coffee supporters for being more awesome than finding a dragon egg in my backyard and believe me that would actually be pretty awesome with all of that out of the way let's dive into it and we're going to start with the community's answers this entire series was inspired specifically by these intense reactions from players and they can be extremely passionate on both sides which is why i wanted to see what they each kind of thought about the game why they love it and why they might think we are in general so negative I made two posts on my community tab, both of which I got some stellar replies. I'm going to be summarizing most of what they said, and then we're going to dive into some conclusions. I scoured through around 500 comments. I think that should be enough. The rule for this section that I have placed on myself is that I am not allowed to say anything negative. If I do, I have to go buy a Lipogoner. Great motivation. Here was my question for the defenders. Why do you love Star Stable? And why are you unaffected by these negative elements? And here were their responses. There are four main reasons people play Star Stable as a whole. It gave me horses to ride and interact with when I didn't have them. I was horse obsessed, but for years I only got to be with them a few times a year. I played the original CD Star Stable games religiously, and when I discovered the online version, I played it even more. It's not only nostalgia, but every now and then I get that little flutter of childlike happiness when I'm riding one of my many pretty ponies. This was said by Vendaval, and I'm not surprised by this at all. I honestly believe that this is one of the main reasons people play SSO. Horses in the place of horses. I know for a fact that all of the horse games I got was to scratch that itch in owning a horse. And there is a sort of magic to buying a game, booting it up for the first time, selecting that first horse and going on your first adventure. It's the reason I believe that these horse games are still so popular. It's a perfect escape and the perfect fantasy to get lost in. The second reason a lot of people cited was friends. SSO is an online game and as such, it's instantly more fun. Because any game is more fun with friends, except for golem creatures like myself. I'm going to let an SSO player with a social life explain even a little bit more. Lily Major Hope says the following. My reason why I still love Star Stable is very easy. Star Stable is the one game where me and my cousin who lives far away can still play together. I feel like I have a little online family in Star Stable. I met my best friend, or more commonly known as my online sister in Star Stable. So it's easy for me that every time I want to be mad at Star Stable, I just think of all the amazing people I have met online, and then I feel much better. This is an extremely fair and good reason to love a game. If you love playing with your friends, then your game is instantly going to have a lot more emotional value for you than a game that you're playing single player. I don't have much to say about this, as I personally do not enjoy Star Stable in the same way, but I honestly do respect people who play it for this reason. The next reason people kind of still play Star Stable is one of the biggest reasons was comfort. Neri says, I love the music, world, as well as its atmosphere, and Star Stable is my comfort game. I simply enjoy a few minutes of quests, but this doesn't mean I don't want longer ones. I was once a lore enthusiast and still need dialogue which relaxes me me and it reminds me of my of many great memories in my life. It's a game where you can turn on a podcast or music, sit back and chill for an hour or so. It's relaxing and calming and the best way to unwind. And I can completely understand that as well. My main reason for playing SSO is logging on, riding around for a bit and then heading off again. It's a good way to unwind after a long day. Now, some people might feel this is a detriment, myself included. Games should, according to a lot of us, have more story or gameplay to hold our interest. But to be honest, relaxing games have their place. And if that is the direction SSO was going for, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. However, if they only want to make a game that is there for relaxing, maybe they should reassess their $80 price tag. Son of a b**** 
Now, the final reason is nostalgia. Lily says, 100% nostalgia driven. I've played the game for around four to five years now, and this game got me through some hard times while I was dealing with in real life problems and through the COVID lockdown too. Some people actually mention nostalgia or the fact that the game is their childhood as one of the biggest reasons. And it makes a lot of sense. In childhood, our strongest emotional connections are formed. Any game, movie, book or other media we interacted with will still stick with us because chances are we felt a specific emotion when playing that game for the very first time when we picked it up. And that's a powerful emotion. That first time emotion, like a first kiss. So overall, the reasons why so many people keep playing SSO is friends, comfort, horses and nostalgia. A couple of other reasons that people cited for still playing the game was role-playing, dressage, collectibles, enjoying the grind, the events, the environments, a high investment, as in monetary investment, making your own fun, the story, and a teacher had a very interesting insight, which I would also like to share. Now, she has students who ride with her, but this is kind of what her students said why they were playing the game. It essentially boils down to that there aren't many other options. What other MMOs are out there for kids where you can own your own horse and ride with your friends? A lot of these kids crave more horse time than once a week lessons can give them. And let's be honest, learning to ride can be hard and boring, while the digital ones are get on and go. I have one kid who comes every week to update me on what her thoroughbred in Star Stable is doing and what she did with her riding club. And it's fun sometimes because I can run her through the same patterns on the real ponies and she absolutely loves it. I really hope that they can figure out some of those logistical things because what other options do they have? And I really think that Toga Vibes got it in one. It is a mixture of friendship, of having a horse that you can't really have, of having this community, of having a space to just enjoy horses. It's a wide range of mixtures that create this little pocket dimension where we can climb on a horse and ride. And that's a perfectly great reason to love Star Stable. It really is. And I'm glad that people do love the game for these reasons, because that means that the game does have value, you know? But now we have to get back into the negative, because despite these being perfectly fine reasons to play it, so it still doesn't change the fundamental flaws of the game itself. And that, by extension, does not justify the price tag. I don't care, it was totally worth it. You run like a sponge horse! Nostalgia in particular is a bit of an issue for a lot of players. In, Reddit, in a Reddit post I made, I asked players outright, do they think the game has changed a lot? And overall, people do feel the game has changed a lot, and it has. Bajikas says, the atmosphere has changed significantly for me. When I started playing around 2014, 2015, I was excited to do the quests. I was invested in the lore. The story was actually interesting, and I absolutely loved the mysterious vibe. I stopped playing around 2017, 2018, because I had everything finished and came back a few months ago excited to go through the new main quest, but none of them gave me the same feeling. I tried doing all the quests again on my alt account, however it wasn't the same and I stopped after like three days and the problem isn't me growing up as I still get a similar feeling while replaying the Starshine Legacy games. Many other players agreed with the sentiment. Over the course of many years, SSO has transformed and not always for the better. So the nostalgia for players is kind of a dead in the water reason for me. I'm not really sure how that works, but they Let's rather let the content creators expand on it. Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh god, she died. <laughs> it's, it's unusual that I have to think. <clears throat> Odd to think. I'm a potato. But um, I think some of the people that has been around as long as I have miss the old star stable. Like the old look, the old feel, the old characters. The horses I and could... i th i think if star stable did something like what warcraft did they brought back like vanilla classic oh, like the old cool. game that would be cool if they did something like this it would blow up if they had a separate game file where you could go back to the old story stable and, like oh this is how it used to be even content could be made like a comparison this is how it used to be then and now and content creators would have a spark again through these actions, SSO is actually killing off a lot of their older player base that is still willing to enjoy the game. Now, many defenders of the game would rightfully point out that the game cannot remain stagnated in the past, and this is absolutely true, especially for online games. Games that do not grow with the times will eventually die out, and change can also be a good thing for a game. But there is a right way and a wrong way of going about this. Let's take World of Warcraft as an example. Graphically, they have changed. Story-wise, it has evolved, and gameplay-wise as well. But here's the thing. I play 
played World of Warcraft around 10 years ago, and a few months ago I played it again. And despite playing in a different area and as a different race, it still felt like I was playing World of Warcraft. And here's why. Take a listen. Greetings. Be careful. The sound effects are the same. The feeling of the game is the same. They did not tamper with the emotion the game evoked. Many players have noted that comparing old SSO with new SSO, there is a ton of difference. The old SSO evoked a sense of mystery and darkness. The new SSO evokes a sense of happiness and light. As a result, it feels like a completely different game. Games like Dead Space and Spyro both received overhauls and both were very well received because despite the graphical upgrades, they kept the feeling of the game intact. And so I felt like I was playing Spyro, not a bad copy or remake of Spyro. Did you hear that, Frogwares? How about you not screw up your game Awakened again, hmm? It feels like SSO is being remade. And this is killing the nostalgia for a lot of players. However, the fact that many players still note nostalgia as a reason for playing could mean that these changes do not affect the game as much as I initially thought. As Max said, players don't really know what the hell they want, and this is kind of a good example of that. But to be fair, this UI is also not going to help. World of Warcraft still has its original UI, just for interest sake. But let's get into some of the detractors and let's hear what they specifically specifically have to say about the game. So here was my question for my viewers. Why do you think the SSO community is so negative of late. Rose Moonbridge says, One main thing seems to be the lack of trust because of SSO's past actions, and that will probably take some time to build up again. The snow update was fantastic and longed for, actually a bit surprising. And maybe there is a key there to not have high expectations. Personally, when stepping back from the game a bit and not keeping grudges of past situations, I feel more peaceful. Seeing the development with, so with SSO with a healthy dose of optimism and skepticism seems like a preferable option. This was one of the main reasons, and I do mean the main one. Most everyone felt betrayed by promises made and not kept. Players feel like so many promises have been made and so few have been kept that they feel like nothing SSO says can be taken seriously anymore. And can we really blame them? And now with more promises made like breeding, it could be that SSO is once again biting off more than they can chew and the breeding will be dropped down into the ether. It might not happen, but their track record unfortunately proves otherwise. The other point to, you know, go into these updates with a healthy dose of skepticism is actually not a bad idea. Maybe if we just lowered our expectations a bit, SSO will be able to reach them. Now the second problem that people had were poorly handled features. As Nugs said, I think the problem also lies in the fact that although we're getting things we wanted, they seem to be poorly executed. Almost like no real thought was put into it. It seems like it was a way to shut people up. Also constantly talking about things like, oh, what if we add breeding? Why do they keep bringing ideas up knowing the things already promised haven't been put into the game yet? The characters constantly get pushed back. So why even start with something when other things aren't finished? Again, the poor execution of things is frustrating because they rarely ever go back and change things. The rich Retrofitting is a great example of this. So much of the tack currently cannot be fitted onto so many of the horses and this is frustrating. But also championships, carrying system and bunny hop are three instances where features were implemented and poorly done. Champs and the bunny hop was quickly fixed, but the carrying system was a complete bust. A promise for a new carrying system brought to mind perhaps, you know, different feeds or a new way of doing it. And that's not what happened. It was only a cosmetic change. I still don't get this at all. And this only heightens player skepticism. Even when SSO fulfills the promise, the chances that it will be fulfilled properly is small. And the final issue, too little, too late. As I'm not gonna pronounce your name says, I think for a lot of people it's too little too late. We've been complaining about certain things for years and they're only just now waking up to it. And a lot of trust was lost in those years which will be very hard to get back. This is a quote I heard a lot and I honestly do understand where players are coming from. Constantly waiting for something to be realized and then never getting it will eventually scrape away any sort of hope you foster that the game will get better. So even when SSO tries, they don't the players don't care because their constant hope has been weathered away by the passage of time. Trying to rekindle that hope is very difficult. Now, the other problems that people also cited for why the game is such an issue were the community is too diverse, which creates a lot of problems with a lot of people yelling for different things. Negative people are simply the loudest of the bunch. The prices are too high. The game is too shallow. The game has become soulless. The focus has been split, meaning they're putting their eggs in too many baskets. 
there is literally too much to count. Like a lot of people mentioned this, like everything is wrong with this game, as, as we've kind of gone through a lot of the issues throughout the series. And now that we've established what both sides want, we can perhaps see a bit of an issue between these two groups. But Abigail brings an interesting insight about the community, which needs to be mentioned. We are a divided bunch. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Star Sable community is big enough, you know, it, it, it is a notable community, however, you have so many layers going from, like, the general populace, right, so you've got, you know, to enjoy Star Stable properly, I'm gonna stereotype here, but, you know, let's say you've got to like horses, okay, so the bubble gets smaller, then you have to like specifically Star Stable, the game, and then that gets smaller. Then you have to get, uh, then you have to like Star Stable content, again, the bubble gets smaller. And then you have to like one person specific Star Stable content, um, and that bubble is now tiny. Um, although that might be thousands of thousands of people when you've got like the general populace and especially the populace on YouTube, um, this particular community is rather small. Um, the one thing that sort of binds us all together is the fact that we like horses. And unfortunately, that's not quite enough glue to make everybody agree with each other because you have so many, you know, you've got so many backgrounds, so many um, economic statuses, you've got, you know, political views, all of this stuff that then plays into that. And it's so hard to get everybody to say, yes, we unify behind this one thing. Abigail brings it home with a very fair point. With so many ideas, beliefs, and overall feelings around the game, it is no wonder that there is such a divide between players. Like she also rightfully points out, it's mostly the horses that keeps us together, and not even that is always true, as some players play solely for the story and don't give a damn about the horses. And this creates divide and makes figuring out what players want very difficult. On the one hand, players enjoy the game for relaxing, so updates are really secondary. On the other hand, players want to see the game grow into its $70 price tag, so updates are absolutely mandatory. So the question is now, to whom does SSO listen to? This is where they struggle, and why I think making the player base happy is next to an impossible task. Because on top of trying to find a balance between keeping the game relaxing for the one group and adventurous for the other, they also have to contend with their poor engine. A couple of people have pointed this out. The engine is in such a state that adding all of these changes or hopeful updates could be such a tremendous undertaking that it could be done not impossible. Updating the engine or cleaning it is the answer, and perhaps these new updates are possible because they are now finally fixing it. We might never know. But the main thing is, we have two groups that are asking for two completely different games at the end of the day. As Abigail points out, it is very difficult to get people to unify. It is very difficult to get them to listen to a single thing because everyone has their own ideas of what they want for the game. But this is why people riot. Yeah, I I have noticed that that from past experiences, the only times that they are actually doing something that seems like they're listening to the players is when the players have had an absolute uproar. Mm. There have been uh, star coin strikes and horse buying strikes and stuff like that. When there is money at stake and when there is a real big uproar amongst the community that's when they listen so the community is learning from this yeah. and learning that the only way to get it our way and make them listen is to be as loud as possible a whole community like thousands and ten thousands of people had to riot for them to fix it finally after so many years i'm glad it did which is great it warms my heart that they did something good but uh, then there's a the problem of uh, adding things to the game we didn't ask for instead of fixing things like the small bugs i mentioned and the stuff that we've been wanting to be fixed for years is still not fixed people become angry when players strike or they you know start riots but honestly what are they supposed to do in the past, the only time SSO listened, like really listened, is when we started strikes and yelled at them to listen. We don't want to. No one wants to. Trust me, it's an extremely draining procedure. But if we want to see the game improve, a game that we paid for, then what are we supposed to do? It is frustrating that the only way to get the retention is to scream at the top of our lungs. But for some reason, that's the only time SSO really listens, when we make noise. But now we have to look at a something slightly more startling topic. Is it SSO dying. During my discussion with many of these content creators and a few others, a few of them noted that the slow decay of views. People aren't watching SSO content as much as they used to. You know for years that people have said SSO is dying, SSO is dying. Yeah, they are, they are, they are for 
like five years or so, or even longer than that. Every time they say so is dying. But the thing is that YouTube algorithm says it all. People don't watch much Star Wars Table content anymore, I've realized. So what I've seen that, for example, big movies that people make or series, RPs, update videos, they get less attention than they used to. So I'm not sure why this is, why it happened, but personally, I think maybe it has something to do with the players changing or the game has changed too much for people to keep up with. Um, for me, Star Stable is dying. For me personally, I have lost interest in Star Stable. Sure, I still like to live stream the game because training is more fun with people and talking. I love talking, if you haven't noticed. Yeah, I've noticed. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. No, it's fine. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, live streaming is still fine for me, but content creation in SSO is way more difficult, especially shopping sprees videos. Like I mentioned, they're not doing as well as they used to back in the old days. During my time when I first started with SSO content, two years ago-ish, SSO was still pretty relevant. It was still pretty doing decently well, I would say. But now, it's just... Huh? What is this? The, it is like, YouTube doesn't know what it is anymore. So I think it's just, people have switched interest. Also, other horse games come in, like Tales of Ravine, Unbridled, that horse game. Astride is also in the making. So there's a lot of new horse games. There's like, hello, we're here. We're gonna join the circle. Come join us. And I think people are kind of starting to compare the games yeah. more with each other. A lot of players have said that the game is dying for a very long time. And although I don't think it's in danger of killing over tomorrow, I do think it is definitely slipping. Just for interest's sake, let's look at some of the numbers. Now, Honey has around 2.1 million subscribers, and around four years ago, she got about 1 million views per SSO video. Just Peachy, another SSO YouTuber, would get around three or four years ago around 20k views per video. Now, SSO, for the most, if not all of its horse breeds, got around 300,000 views per horse breed. Now, checking these stats today, we see that Honey gets around 20 to 200k views. And Just Peachy will get less than 10k views now. And SSO got around 100k views for every new horse breed, sometimes even less. Now, what this says is there's definitely a dip in views, but this could be a number of factors that is affecting this. As Abigail points out, it could be because they changed their audience to a younger audience that it's maybe not being promoted as much because a video that is getting interacted on will be more likely to be picked up by the algorithm and because YouTube videos that are aimed at kids cannot be interacted with through comments, it could mean that a lot of these videos just aren't getting picked up as much anymore. The other possibility is that there is just a wider range of games today. Although not specifically horse games, perhaps Red Dead Online had a factor in this. Perhaps games like Equestrian the game had a factor in this. Perhaps games like an Star Equestrian that recently came out might also have a factor in this. It could be that the audience's attention is just being split into different areas right now because before Star Stable was a dominating factor and it currently isn't anymore. Elena Nightwalker, very interestingly enough, went ahead and asked, what would you say was the best era of SSO? And most people voted 2015 to 2017. And around 2019, 2018 was the time when these videos were at their highest peak. So it could be that that really was the high point of Star Stable's era. Elena Nightwalker actually further points out that it could be that despite the fact that a lot of people go with old SSO and that's the best time of SSO, that's not necessarily what people are voting for. They are instead voting for a time when SSO was kind of in the shifting process. So it could be that these changes were absolutely welcome at one point, but perhaps the changes just didn't grow in the right direction. But this is all speculation. We really don't know if Star Stable's views really are going down. It could just be like Abigail very rightly pointed out. It could be the algorithm that's kind of being a little wonky over the fact that it's aimed at kids right now. It could be really anything. But I'm actually quite curious if you guys have noticed this, if you think the, the Star Stable community is kind of dipping. I'm quite curious to hear it. So let me know what you all think below. And now with everything covered, with almost every aspect explored, with everything considered and discussed, we can finally now try to answer Answer the main question of this series. Why do you feel the climate of SSO has changed so much and why are players so angry? They've been around for over a decade now, but uh, things have not changed. Hackers still roaming around. The chat system is still 
odd. And bugs, like the small things, even like uh, the reins clipping through the horses, has not been fixed at all. Oh, yeah. So these things, like small things that could have been fixed ages ago, is still not fixed. Yeah. And that bothers people, I assume. It bothers me a lot. They are adding things we never asked for. Oh. They are doing things that we've been asking for years. And all of a sudden, hey, we did it. But guess what? Here's another horse model right after. Yeah. Like, oh, thanks. You know, when there's a controversial update or something and the players give back constructive criticism, it is just taken as hate. And I feel like, you know, the SSO team really takes it personally and, you know, doesn't really do anything with that. And I don't know. I think it's just, I mean, I guess there are some not the most constructive comments along with those but i think you know there's only so many times that you can be like oh i'm so sorry to be bothering you but there's you know this problem with i don't know the update or the new horses or you know the new quest there's just been so many problems over the years it's just very frustrating and it's very you know tiring to actually care about this game yeah, I mean, I don't think people would talk about it if they didn't care about the game. And I feel like the biggest critics care the most. So I, I really get kind of sad when they're so, like, angry when anyone says any, you know, thing like that. They don't listen, which I feel like is pretty known by this point. And I just feel like they only cater to these people that only make them look good. And just the toxic positivity too they don't they, they just try to act like there's nothing wrong and everything's fine and of course that's gonna make people mad because for instance the other day they gave us two more times for the champ schedules and they acted like that was enough if anything that made me even more mad because it should have been done in the right way the first time so what they do is they constantly disappoint us and then they give us a little bit of leverage and then act like that's enough when in reality it just makes people even more mad. So yeah, it's it's kind of like like a toxic relationship. Like they do something wrong, then they love bomb you, but it's it's not enough, you know? I think that a great deal of the issue is that the company is just not being faithful, not to the game nor to the players. Uh, the game looks different, works different, has a different story, different characters, and has entirely strayed away from its original concept. Mm. Uh, and there's no reason to believe that it's gonna stop here, because when you try and survive, SSO will change, and when politics evolve, SSO is gonna change, and when the devs wanna try something different, SSO will change. And the players don't have a say in any of this. Like, for example, when the Frisians were gonna get out, uh, they released this early concept thing and asked for feedback, and nothing happened uh, at the release. Nothing had been changed, even though they had been given so much feedback from so many people. Yeah. And oftentimes, when they make decisions, it's with this attitude of, it's our game and we're gonna do this, period. So what's left is a feeling of helplessness, as the devs seem to be doing whatever they like, breaking the immersion of their own world and the connection with the players. And I think people are very annoyed by the fact that it takes a full riot to be heard. And this is uh, what I said earlier I was going to talk about. Because nothing happened until players started going on strikes or threatened to boycott the game altogether. It's like, these things aren't happening because the company actually wants to improve things, but because they fear the backlash and the financial, uh, the financial loss. And if players have to riot to get what they want, they'll just have to keep rioting to keep getting what they want. Because that's the only way that the company is actually going to listen to them. And some may say that the devs should be respected for the hard work they put in, but to be honest, the community has been patient for very, very long. The players are the ones paying for SSO's existence, so it's about time they get shown some respect as well. There's a really big disconnect between the social media team, the uh, development team, the support ticket team, and upper management. So, it, you know, even if we're reaching the social media team, um, we very rarely see anything actually done. Um, so I think that's... I would describe it as a hangover, I suppose. Like, a lot of people um, are still very much upset about things. Um, 
and unfortunately, Star Sable is still sort of dealing with that. Um, I think there is something to be said about like it's sometimes people can get very angry mob <laughs> and sort of like get very like you know you get very angry together and that can be a fun experience don't get me wrong when you have something to stand behind and to say you know this is what we believe in this is what we think is the right thing to do um but it's sort of difficult after the fact um whether or not it's been you know frustratingly ignored or, or kind of pushed aside or if there has been something done about it um after the fact people can still be kind of riled up and can still be a little bit um angry about things and so i feel like star stable is kind of still experiencing that and if anything i i don't want to say star stable because at the end of the day the company is very much not affected by what is kind of happening in the community it is other community members you know it is youtubers like yourself who are at the forefront of kind of put, put, putting things in the spotlight and, and saying here let's have some attention on this let's talk about this you know let's have a discussion and it's hard to have a discussion if everybody's like yeah that sucks we hate it you know get rid delete star stable right now you know it's difficult to have an open conversation when that's sort of happening um so i can understand why that question is kind of i wouldn't say on everybody's minds but it's definitely a question i've thought to myself like you know where where is the line where do we draw the line and say okay you know things are going well we we are allowed to enjoy things still just to kind of like tie that into like a neat bow is um, I can completely understand why people are still sort of upset about things. Um, but and, you know, as you have just described to me, like what happened this week where, you know, uh, Star Stable were like, yeah, we're we're doing uh, an overhaul of the championships. And everyone's like, yeah, that's great. The championships are really boring and they've been the same for 10 years. Like, let's let's change it up. And, you know, obviously there's some people like grumbling about it, but then the update comes out and like half of it's broken. Um, that is not necessarily due to the community. That's not even usually due to the dev team. It's they're not bug testing it properly. Um, which is something to gripe about. It is to say, come on guys, we're expecting better quality work. Um, but at the same time, if you've already gone in with the, I think it's it's going in with the preset of like, I'm not going to like this, then you're far more likely to be super negative about it rather than going in with the, with the uh, mindset of being like, you know what? I don't have high hopes, <laughs> but I'm still going to try to enjoy it, you know? I thought about this for a while, and I looked at the... I've looked through some servers, and what mostly... Uh, what I'm mostly seeing is that people... Like, the community doesn't really know what they want. Because there's a huge group of people who is like... Um, uh, for example, we recently got the championship update. Mm -hmm. um there's a huge group of people who was like yeah but the championships aren't uh there's no championships after 9 p.m and now star stable listened to us and added championships after 9 p.m and now there's people complaining that that's not what they asked for while that is literally what they asked for like, oh my word <laughs> the community is so indecisive like Every time we ask for something and Star Stable listens, it's not good enough yeah. and we want more. And I, I feel like they're trying to listen. And yes, there's times where they don't listen. And yes, there's times where updates are bad. But there's also times where they do genuinely listen and we still get upset. <laughs> yes. And like the, the, like the negativity is feeling more negativity and it's just piling up yeah exactly <laughs> at, the, at the point where negativity is all we're seeing and there are the reasons why players are upset despite the fact that sso is working on fixing these issues it took them too long to get to it and now small things have piled up which might never get fixed because their schedule for horse releases are so intense like retrofitting so many new horses are coming out and so much new tack is coming out that the tack only fits the newer horses which forces players to buy new horses and makes a lot of their older tack useless sso is not exactly making this a top priority and it is a damned frustration for players, especially those who sink a lot of money into TAC. However, despite the fact that they are adding changes and new features like the buying window, bunny hops, new champs, 
they tend to drop the ball on both bugs and details, like with the championships and bunny hops, which then later needed to be fixed. And when players complain, SSO will sometimes pretend that everything is fine, which isn't true, and this causes more frustration. Because this overly positive attitude only incites more bitterness and anger because the negative emotions are not being acknowledged, these players feel ignored. And as SSO keeps changing the game, the story and the world without any input from the players, they feel doubly so, and this makes players feel like SSO is essentially unfaithful to its player base. As a result, the players feel like the only way to get SSO's attention is by rioting, which causes the defenders to become more aggressive against the detractors because we're being mean. Due in part to this, people who are critical are often attacked and dogpiled on by other players, and so they also feel ostracized. When SSO does finally listen, these bitter players are ready to shoot it down, because their own anger and bitterness grew and formed for so long that anything SSO does will always be too little too late. And at the same time, players are feeding off of each other's anger, causing mobs to form and groups to form that either hate or love SSO, which creates an us versus them mentality. This does not help the animosity at all and makes players become angry for no reason. And really, they just become angry to become angry because being angry is kind of fun sometimes. Which actually leads to players don't always agree on what they want. When SSO added the snow, many players requested the snow be put back in. When it was put back in, a bunch of players complained that the snow should be removed because it needs to be special for the winter festival. I'm not surprised that Star Stable might be a little confused. Top this up with bugs, overpriced star coins, broken promises, condescending attitude from the social media teams, and poorly implemented features, and we can see why players might be so bitter towards a company they loved for so long, despite the fact that company is now doing better. And they also permanently banned a player for using an in-game item. And they're not fixing the mobile version. You shoppers are both, stop! And they've just announced the Generation 4 horses. That was a lot of reasons all wrapped up into one, and all of this is pretty fascinating to be honest. Seeing the pieces fall onto the table makes me realize that there's a lot going on, and a lot of this is on the company, and some of it is on the players. Now, the final topic I really want to get into is... The idea that Star Stable, despite all of these issues and despite all of these problems and despite the fact that it is possibly dying, it's actually doing better. Yes, I want to be very clear about that. Uh, what they're doing nowadays with the roadmaps and monthly blog posts, beta tests and everything, that is definitely an improvement of what they've been doing before, like yeah. 100%. But I also think that they've been doing very little for very long and allowed the problems to kind of pile up. And that's why people now are demanding more. And to be fair, if we look at what the game market is like right now, the community's expectations aren't even unreasonable. It's a highly competitive business and there are so many games out there that will give you your money's worth. So, and, and like now that a stride is in the works too, SSO is about to face real competition, so they do need to step their game up in order to keep their player base. And, with people being fed up with the company and the direction of the game, a lot of them will be ready to switch to another game as soon as they get the chance, and Star Stable Entertainment will just have to do what it takes to prevent that from happening. That includes doing things like roadmaps, monthly blog posts, beta tests. They have to actually put in an effort they never have put in before to keep their player base. So I while I do while I do think that they are doing more, I also think that uh, what they're doing is kind of like the bare minimum of what we can expect at this stage when there are competition and there are a lot of other games in the gaming market that are better, like you said. I can sense the changes that they are trying and I see the changes slightly. Mm. Still pulling out a lot of horses, still doing the horse rotations, still adding clothes that are expensive. Just it's a money-making machine at this point. I still love the game. I still have a lot of respect for the game. It still looks good. But if they can just focus on things like updating the areas, like Dino Valley is horrendous. It's so crisp. And the fact that they removed... I understand they have removed the older forces because the game is not running so good. Mm. That is also an excuse, by the way, that they think, oh, we need to remove this because the game is running bad. They removed the fjords, the first thing they did, years ago. 
like way before they started removing these guys and i thought why why did you guys remove the fjord so early on and then waited like several years until you the other one yeah that was stupid i loved the fjord over my dead body it was great <laughs> So we're having regrets that I didn't get another one. Um, oh yeah, that's but so sad. Sorry, yeah? Overall, SSO is getting better. SSO is trying. They've been here for 11 years. I've been here for 11 years. <laughs> I've seen the beginning, the ups and downs, the roller coaster. I've seen them hit, then dig up, survive, then dig up again. And they are trying. And I respect that they are. I still like the game. Will I make content on this game anymore or anything like that? Not as much as I used to. Because I feel like SSO is officially dying. I think they're they're improving a lot. I don't think they're doing their best. Mm -hmm. But I've seen I see that they're trying to listen. They're giving us updates that we asked for. They've been working on story quests, which we've asked for for so long. Like there's there's things coming out that we've been asking for for a while and they're working on it they're showing progress they're even sharing stuff with us now due yeah. to the um, uh, blog posts like they they didn't used to do that before like they're trying they're trying their best mm. so there's improvement is it the best they can do i don't think so but they're they're doing a lot better than they used to yeah i definitely think that sso is doing better than they did you know during the corona time and you know during that time like the updates are bigger and you know i i think better received like in like what was it 2020 or 2021 when we just received like the whole update was the you know magic on and off button i i, I cannot believe that but and you know in the past we used to get updates with you know just the new horses but now you know we get new horses and i don't know maybe a new race mm. and new talk which i think is much better so I, I i think they're definitely trying to do better and they are doing better and i like that but i would like if they you know listen to the community more but i think they're definitely you know doing better than they did in the past i think it's kind of going back to you know the the old updates that were kind of popular i i hope i would really hope that they picked up some of the old quest lines that they kind of left out but then at the same time no you know what i wouldn't like that because i feel like they just changed them okay i take that back but yeah i think they're they, they definitely seem passionate about the game and you know now that there's much more competition they are doing better they you know they're putting out better updates and i feel like for the most part yeah they, they're doing good they seem a lot more ambitious to be fair like they seem they seem to actually you know want to make change i feel like 2020 2021 was really stagnant um they weren't they maybe that's just um unfair to say because maybe they were you know preparing for stuff uh, obviously i don't know the inside workings but um it definitely felt like stuff was the same and they weren't listening they weren't really changing anything uh, but i definitely feel nowadays that they are you know obviously the whole we had a, a a text discussion about the whole um bonding thing and how they're going to execute that obviously they've looked to overhaul the uh championships which is great you know just stuff where i feel like they're actually getting creative with it now um and i think something to do with this is there are sort of two outlooks that you can have if you want to be really cynical about it, you can say that they're always going to strive to do better because it's going to, you know, positively impact their profits. You know, it's all about money. It's all about money. Or you can look at it in a more positive light and say, you know what? It doesn't matter where it's come from within the company. You get to enjoy the changes. You get to enjoy the new features. Admittedly, sometimes they're broken. Um, <laughs> that's a different topic, though. You know, we still get to reap uh you know that's not reap is not the right word uh what is it like harvest the benefits i there's a saying there that i can't remember <laughs> you know we, we get to experience the i think that's it yeah reap i thought it's reap 
no repercussions. I've gotten confused. Anyway, my point, my point was, is you can choose to enjoy it. You can choose to, you know, I'm not saying sugarcoat it. I'm not saying, you know, look at it through, um, you know, pink tinted glasses or whatever. Just being able to say, you know what? I like that. I enjoyed that. And if you don't enjoy it, that's okay too. That's fine. Um, but I think that there's just, there's this lingering negativity, um, now, actually, ah, sorry, I always missed this. I did a whole thing. I wrote a little thing about human psychology. I'm not a psychologist, but um, human psychology, I think, for everybody is rather interesting. Um, and I know for a fact that we naturally sort of get enjoyment out of being fired up. We get enjoyment out of being frustrated, out of being, you know, um, you know, riled together and we're standing behind a cause and, you know, we feel like we're, we're taking a stand almost. Um, I mean, to be fair, most emotions are fun in their own way. Uh, some of them suck, but you know, um, it's, it's, it's something we get, can get caught up in. We can get caught up in being mad and frustrated and, um, you know, disappointed in. Uh, we kind of get swept up in the masses. And I put um, a quote here that says, yeah, Star Stable sucks. I hate the game. Let's go play 20 hours a week. It's sort of like if you genuinely think the game is so bad, then there are sort of other options for you to take now. Admittedly, as I said before, it's not going to be star stable, um, but there are other things that you can play. And um, it's sort of saying that it sucks and you hate it and you hate everything about it isn't helpful because it's not constructive. You know, saying, I don't like this element, I think they could do this better, X, Y, Z, here's why, is better than saying this update sucked. You suck. So stop updating the game, you know. Um, it, it's down to, I think, us as individuals to decide what we want to do with the game that is given to us. Um, don't get me wrong, don't confuse that with me saying you should shut up and, and be happy with what you're given because we, uh, if I could shake you, I would. I would say you are paying for the game, okay? The, if you are a consumer, okay? If you bought uh, a phone and it was broken, you wouldn't go to Samsung and they'd be like, well, you know, you, you, you get what you get, just enjoy it. It's like, no, you, you deserve a proper product. You deserve something that you can enjoy and play. But at the same time, if if we're getting updates that are actually in the right direction, it isn't helpful to be super negative about it. So um, yeah. It's too little too late, but it's a good move in the right direction. But also instead of worrying about that, they should worry about more important things. So I feel like I can tie all of it together. like. Even with the horse purchasing screen, there was a lot of missed potential with that. But it, honestly, it's better than it was, so I can give them that. Like, I'm proud of them for that. And the movie thing, I'm glad they listened to that, but they didn't listen until people threw a bitch fit. And I was one of those people that threw a bitch fit because <laughs> I was really mad. But I just feel like there's so many other things they could put their time into also. The horse bonding thing so far, I think it looks pretty good. I just hope they listen because some people don't like the UI. Yeah. And yeah. I honestly, I don't like the UI. And there's a difference between revamp and overhaul, and they're known for overhaul. And it's it's a good start. Like, I do think the UI needs to be updated. So kudos to them for that. I just think, I, I just hope they listen because so far I haven't seen much positive feedback on it but i do i do think more the more that i think about it i am happy that they're doing better i'm glad they listen a little bit more than they used to yeah. but at the same time i feel like as a company that is completely just it's an mmo if it's an mmo as they claim they should be listening more and there's more that they could do but for what star stable is i, I think they're doing pretty all right if anything's better than the way it was in like 2021 so i mostly take the more neutral road because i i know there's good and there's bad things but when i see people angry i i understand it's just like i'm not gonna tell you to stop like it's just there's a rightful reason to be mad because everyone's different right like some things that cater to me don't cater to other people and I get that because they should be finding a way to cater to everybody and they don't, but yeah. What I'm trying to say is I understand. <laughs> I think the climate of SSO has changed a lot due to the company itself and their decisions. We all know about the older players being upset by now, but I think SSO also removing features of the game or adding new things might not always come across very great to players. For example, 
we don't have Valentine's Day anymore, but now we have poor sales. Like, exchanging old things for new things doesn't always work, so it could make the old players upset or the new players upset, and it's just not really working. I think SSO has improved over the past year, and I'm really glad for that. But for a game that makes so much money and has so many employees, I just know they could do a lot better. I think a lot of players think that too, since many of them feel like they aren't being heard. I used to not like having horses being added to the game a lot, but for a horse game, it makes sense that SSO adds horses a lot now, especially because it's revenue. However, we could have both. Like, Star Stable definitely could add both quests and horses to make both sides happy. I think SSO just needs better management, honestly, because they have so much potential. They're doing good lately, but not as good as they should be. But Star Stable is causing the climate to be that way because of not finding a way to help both sides of the player base. CC Creations, our local Star Stable spoiler, also weighed in on the situation. I'm going to read their response because I think it's a very, very good response. The mood in the Star Stable community has been rather tense and negative for a long while, but I actually think the climate has improved within the last couple of months. I'm not very active in the Star Stable community outside of my YouTube channel and a little bit of Instagram, so my view was mostly based on the comments that I received on spoiler videos, and these comments have changed over the years. I started my YouTube channel around the same time time when Star Stable began the process of modernizing the game, updating the graphics style and making a lot of other small changes to the game. And I believe this is some of where this hate started. In order to update the game, Star Stable had, or still has, to do a lot of background work, and that's not visible to the players. Instead, it felt like the game had come to a halt, the main quest wasn't really progressing, and it felt like Star Stable was only bringing out new horses. And especially in the beginning of the Gen 3 era, people were not happy with the new horses. Honestly, the comments were vicious at times, not only under my videos, but on the SSO Instagram posts too. And the players repeated the same critique points over and over and over for each new horse breed. So of course they came to the conclusion that Star Stable wasn't listening. Star Stable was trying to calm the community down by explaining what was going on and what was planned in the future. And that they did see all of this critique. But nothing happened within the game for years, I would say. Naturally, the players grew angrier the longer all of this was going on. They no longer trusted the company. But in 2022, I saw a change in the comments of my videos. People are complaining less about the frequent frequency of the new horse releases. They are still complaining, but not as much, and the opinion of the horses is generally more positive. Not always, of course, but even then the comments are more constructive. I think that is because the community is overall more pleased with the recent updates. We are finally able to see some of the changes that Star Stable has talked about for so long. Character update, for example. The main quest comes to mind, even if it is slow, and we have gotten updates with stuff that the community has asked for. Snow, for example. However, occasionally the mood in the comments changes a couple of hours after I upload my video. Sometimes Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. This is not new, but I have been noticing it more and more often lately. It's probably because other influencers are reacting on the videos, giving their opinion and people, especially younger ones, being influenced by that. I wouldn't say that that's always a bad thing, but it can explain some of the hate waves in the community. And now there are new issues like the reclining stability of the game, cheaters, climbing prices, player updates, criticism, etc. And I still have the feeling that Star Stable is not reacting quick enough. If they don't act quickly, I'm afraid the situation will be back where it started in 2017. In closing, SSO has a lot of ground to cover before players will be open in trusting them again, before old wounds have truly healed and before players will feel comfortable in expressing their happiness without a dose of skepticism to go with it. Bugs, prices, broken promises, cheaters, broken features and all these other problems are only causing more unrest in the community. But you see, here's the thing. They made the champs better, they added bunny hops, they added a new purchasing window and a camera mode, and now they are working towards adding a bonding mechanism and possibly breeding. And if they can work closely and listen to the player feedback, these updates might be something wonderful. It can be. It truly can be. And that's the thing, Star Stable is always on the cusp of being something great. It always has the potential to turn into something great. SSO is trying, and that counts for far more than you know, because the first step in fixing a problem is admitting that you have one. And the fact that they are now fixing it is showing to everyone that they have acknowledged the problem, and they can now finally fix it. Personally, I'm hopeful for the future, and cautiously optimistic. And if SSO keeps going down the path they are going, then the game will get better.